Welcome to my presentation on Irrecoverable and Doubtful Debts, which is found in the Advanced Bookkeeping Level 3 AAT module. In this video, I will be focusing on the double entry for Irrecoverable Debts and also how to calculate the adjustment for Doubtful Debts and apply that to the double entry in accounts as well. Just before we get started, a quick introduction to myself. Um, I'm AAT qualified, studied level two, three and four. I'm currently working in finance and have been now for two years, but my ultimate ambition is to train to teach AAT in the future. The presentations that I do are just about the key concepts of AAT um, and they're designed to support the fundamentals um, that will help you progress through levels two, three and four. I'm not endorsed by AAT and these materials are my own. I hope these help and prove to be beneficial and good luck. And most of all, enjoy the journey that is AAT. OK, so let's just start with a very quick um, recap on what irrecoverable and doubtful debts are. So irrecoverable debts um, are debts that where we know we won't receive payment from the customer. So we know that there's no chance of us having that money back. Um, that could happen for a variety of reasons. Um, but that debt has become bad and we know that we will not be able to recover that from the customer. Then on the other hand, we have our doubtful debts. So our doubtful debts are those that we think are unlikely to be paid. And this is quite normal because um, when you run a business and you have a portfolio of customers, there are always going to be those customers that, um, you know, a very small percentage of them will um, not be able to pay you for um, whatever reason. And so it's for these this that we then deem a doubtful debt, which can be one of two things. So um, a doubtful debt can um, have a general allowance. So that's by a company setting a policy of how much normally in a percentage um, of their trade receivables um, they think is, is doubtful. OK, so it might be that um, a company has a policy um, that 2% of their trade receivables would always be um, classed as doubtful debts. But then you've also got a specific allowance. OK, so this could also be that a customer, um, perhaps a customer's trading badly. You're aware that, they, that you've been having conversations with them. Um, things aren't sounding particularly good. So it could be that it's a particular customer um, that you know where their invoice um, may not be paid. So there's two different ones there, a general allowance and a specific allowance um, for the doubtful debts. And that's not to be confused with your irrecoverable debts, which are debts that we know we're not going to get payment for. Starting with irrecoverable debts then. So when you're doing your journals for irrecoverable debts, um, you will be using two accounts, your sales ledger control account and an irrecoverable debts account. The irrecoverable debts account um, may also be called bad debts, so it's kind of an inter interchangeable term, um, and your sales ledger control may also be called um, your trade receivables account. So it's just worth um, remembering when these other terms come up um, as, as sort of syllabuses and things change, you can find that terminology changes a little bit as well. So your trade receivables, or this might also be known as bad debt. Don't forget when you're doing your um, journals as well, you're also going to have your subsidiary account, your customer account in the actual customer name, and you're going to have to write the bad debt off in that. Now, this subsidiary account isn't actually involved in the double entry. The double entry will occur between the sales edge of control and the irrecoverable debts, which I'll show you on the next slide. Um, but you will also have a customer account um, and you'll need to make sure that you take the bad debt out of that account as well so that their balance to you is reduced. But before you do the journal, um, let's just have a sort of think about the, the account types that are involved here and how we can apply them to dead click. So first of all, I'm just going to bring up our little dead click diagram on the right hand side there. 
and we're going to have a think about um, sort of our sales ledger control account. and our irrecoverable debts account. So when we're, when we're looking at these, we already know from, from all of our experience so far um, through our AAT studies, we already know that our sales ledger control account um, is an asset account to us because th this is the money that we're expecting to receive from our customers. So we actually use that as an asset account in terms of our double entry. So when we are applying our double entry, we need to think about what is going to happen to this account. So this account being an asset account, we're going to be reducing it because we're actually going to be saying that the customers owe us a certain amount of money, but £100 of that is going to be written off as bad debt. So that is going to reduce that account by £100. So what is that going to be? So if you look at our dead click and you look at our look, at, always remember the arrow. So when we increase an asset, we're going to debit it. But as we've just said, we're going to be decreasing our asset because we're going to be taking an amount out as bad debt. So if we're going to be decreasing an asset, then it becomes a credit. So when you're doing your journal, your sales ledger control account is going to be a credit. So naturally, you can already see that the um, the opposite side is going to be a debit into your irrecoverable debts account. But why? And that's because the irrecoverable debts account is treated like an expense account. OK, because that's going to be our cost to the business because we're not getting that money back from our customer. It's a cost to the business. So it is going to be an expense account. And on our dead click over here, we can see when we increase an expense account. That's where our debit comes from. OK, so you're going to have your sales ledger control account and your irrecoverable debts account. You're going to debit your irrecoverable debts to increase the, the expense that's going to the business, the cost to the business. And we're going to credit our sales ledger control account to reduce the amount that we're owed by our customers. So let's have an, a look at an example then um, for irrecoverable debts. You've been told that your customer AJ Limited has gone out of business and the invoice outstanding for them will not be paid. The invoice was for £900. Write off this debt in the accounts. You can ignore VAT. OK, so I'm going to bring up our dead click in the top right there so that we can just refer to it just as we're doing this. And I'm going to bring up a first T account. And this T account, we're going to make our irrecoverable debts account. So what are we going to do then? So our irreco irrecoverable debts account is going to be an expense account, OK, because it's a cost to the business. So our expense account over here, here's our expenses here. We're going to be increasing it. So therefore, it has to be a debit. So we're told that the invoice was for £900 and we can ignore VAT for now. So we're going to debit our irrecoverable debts account £900. So our other side uh, will be our sales ledger control account. OK. Or possibly you might know it as your trade receivables. So this is our asset account. So our asset is here. But we're actually going to be reducing that by this £900 that we're owed. So we're going to credit it. 900 So there's your double entry for your irrecoverable, irrecoverable debts and your um, sales ledger control account. Also, at this point, don't forget that although this is your double entry, you will also have uh, a, an account 
for AJ Limited in your ledger, which is your subsidiary account. So it doesn't form part of your um, official double entry, but you will still need to write that off of your AJ Limited account. So you will also have, you know, another ledger, a small ledger for them specifically. And they will have the 900 sitting in their, in their account here. So then what you would want to do is write it off. So that then balances down to nil. So doubtful debts then. So the doubtful debts are debts that we think are unlikely um, to be paid. So these might be customers that we've had a conversation with where we're thinking, oh, they're not going to pay us. Um, or it could be that just um, generally speaking, um, it's unlikely uh, in any business that you'll get 100 percent of your invoices paid. Obviously, that is the ideal. Um, but you'll normally have an accounting policy within the business that says a percentage of your trade receivables will become doubtful. So what's involved in this then? So the doubtful debts is... Uh, it's an adjustment that's actually made in the financial statements. So the things that we're going to be concerned with are our statement of profit and loss, our allowance for doubtful, for doubtful debts, and our allowance for doubtful debts adjustment. Okay, so they're the, they're the three things that we're going to be moving between in, in order to um, deal with our doubtful debts. So again, before we start thinking about what journals we're going to do, let's consider the account types and our dead click. So this one here, I'm going to do a little bit differently to what I've done before, just because I think this this helped me understand what I was doing in that I, I would be thinking about it in terms of little pots. So I would think about having a, um, a pot here and this was going to be my statement of profit and loss. And I'm going to have a... Um, pot here which is going to be my doubtful debts allowance okay or allowance for doubtful debts okay but in the middle there's a little road and on that little road is going to be a little truck excuse my terrible art okay a little truck there and this little truck is our adjustment account. So it's our doubtful debts adjustment account. And the reason for this is that this is really only a holding account. So I kind of started to think about it in terms of um, the, the lorry going in between the, the two different accounts. And what, when you have to think about it is that what we're actually doing with this adjustment what we're actually doing is we are increasing or decreasing the liability that we've got in our doubtful debts account. OK, so this allowance that we put in at the end of the year might increase or decrease depending on what's happening, what, what this lorry is doing, which will be affected by what's actually going to go on in the profit and loss. So we'll come to that bit in a minute. But. In terms of the um, accounts, because I think it's important to understand what type of accounts they are, the um, account, different types of accounts we've got here. So I just mentioned in what I was saying that this doubtful debts account, um, this account here is a liability account. OK, that's because we are expecting to not be able to recover those those um, invoices, that payment for those invoices. OK, so our liability account. Um, on our statement of profit and loss, um, we have the adjustment as an expense because normally um, it's what we're saying. It's going to be a cost to the business. OK, so on the um, statement of profit and loss, this is going to be our expense. And then the one in the middle um, is, is just an, an adjustment account. This is what we call our holding account. And depending on what happens will depend on whether we're going to debit or credit. This will become a little bit clearer when we do um, an example and I can talk you through an example. 
So when you're looking at this, remember that you're going to have to have um, almost like a, a double journal. OK, so you're going to have to have a journal that's related to the profit and loss. And you're going to have to have a journal that's related to your um, allowance without for debts account, your liability account. OK, so you've got your statement of profit and loss account, which is um, going to be your expense account. And then your um, allowance for doubtful debt to your liability accounts, which will in the end show on your statement of financial position. So let's go on and let's just work through a simple example on the next slide. So let's take a look at doubtful debts example then. Your company accounting policy states that it expects 3% of its trade receivables to become unrecoverable. At year end, 31st of December 17, it has an allowance for doubtful debts of £10,000. At year end, 31st of December 18, the balance of trade receivables is £400,000. Enter the doubtful debts adjustments into the accounts for the year end in 31st of December 18. So just doing a quick review then of the question, let's highlight the most important points. So it's expecting 3% of trade receivables to become unrecoverable. We're told at year end 31st of December 17, it had an allowance for doubtful debts of 10,000. And then at the year end that we're doing, which is 31st of December 18, our balance of trade receivables is £400,000. And we need to enter the doubtful debts for that year end adjustment. So before we actually get on to doing the T accounts, we need to make a um, quick calculation of what we want our doubtful debts to actually be, our allowance for those doubtful debts to actually be. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to do a simple 400,000, which is our trade receivables balance. And we're going to multiply that out by our um, 3%. And that gives us 12,000. So we are expecting to see as our allowance for doubtful debts at the end of the year, an allowance for £12,000. So let's bring our dead click up. And I'm going to bring some accounts up here as well. So let's have a look at what happens. So first of all, there's an important point in this question where we're told what the previous balance was going to be from the previous year of the allowance of doubtful debts. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to put in our allowance for doubtful debts balance that we know about already. So this is um, a liability account. So our liability account is going to have a credit amount in it. So that's where we are. So that before we start our adjustment, that is what's in our allowance for doubtful debts account. However, we know at the end of the and at the end of the year that we're doing the year end for, we know that we need our actual adjustment to be twelve thousand pounds. We need that account here to be showing twelve thousand pounds. So we want to just do our twelve thousand minus ten thousand. And that gives us a £2,000. And it's that £2,000 that becomes our adjustment amount. So how do we now process that? So we're going to start over here with, um, we've got our statement of profit and loss. And this is going to be um, our expense account. OK, so this is where our expense is going to go, because our adjustment is going to be an expense to the business. It's going to be a cost to the business because we're increasing our allowance for doubtful debts. And in the middle here, we're actually going to have the allowance for doubtful debts. Adjustment account. OK. So what we want to do then um, is because we're going to be increasing our account, we, we're going to have to have, take another £2,000 and that's going to be a cost to the business. So that is going to be in our statement of profit and loss as our expenses. So on our dead click, we've got our expense account. We're going to increase it. So therefore, we're going to debit. So our first part of our double entry is going to be that we debit our statement of profit and loss £2,000. 
And then at this stage, this is where I like to think about my little lorry. So what we do, let's imagine our little lorry going across here. OK. What we say is this £2,000 here has been debited into our um, statement of profit and loss. That's fine. We know that's OK. But now what we need to do is we need that £2,000 to also show in our allowance for doubtful debts liability. But we need to do that through our adjustment account. So what we're going to do is we're going to then put this £2,000 and we're going to give it to Mr Lorry Driver. And we're going to say, can you take our £2,000 and can you take it through our adjustment account? So then that is then going to be our other side of our double entry. And there's our adjustment. So that's the first stage. So we debit our um, statement of profit and loss and we credit our allowance for doubtful debts adjustment account. But in order to finish the financial statements, we don't need anything in that adjustment account. That's simply just a holding account, like a movement account. OK, so what we want to do is make sure that that account actually comes back to zero. And the way we do that is we then have to clear it out. So if we've got £2,000 in here as a credit, we're then going to debit £2,000. We're effectively giving it back to our lorry driver here and he's then taking it all the way through into here and there is the other £2,000 entry. So going back to what we've done in red, we have debited our expense account which um, is in our statement of profit and loss. So we've debited the statement of profit and loss which shows the cost to the business of the adjustment. And we've credited it into our allowance for doubtful debts adjustment account. Then we need that account to be clear. So then what we've done in yellow here is we've cleared out the allowance for doubtful debts, debts account. And then we've taken it all the way over into our liability account, which is our allowance for doubtful debts. You can then see that if we were to then have a look at the balance on the account here, it's then 12,000 and that 12,000 is the liability that will show on your statement of financial position. So hopefully that makes it a bit clearer for you that you need to make sure that you're working out what your adjustment is going to be. So don't get confused with working out what your allowance has to be at the end of a year. You need to make sure you know what your adjustment is. So back going back to our question here, we knew that our um, trade receivables was £400,000 at the end of the year. So this was what our total allowance had to be. This is what we were looking for. But we already had this £10,000 balance in our doubtful debts from the previous year. So in order to make sure that we hit the £12,000 liability that we um, need for the year ending 31st of uh, December 18, we have to increase it by £2,000. So that's our adjustment. And at that point, you can then start doing your double entry. So your double entry, you debit the um, statement of profit and loss. So that's our expense. The other side of that is that we credit our adjustment account, so our movement account. We need to clear that out in order to finish off our statements, uh, financial statements. So we need to debit that account to clear it down to zero. And then the other side of that is to credit the allowance for doubtful debts account, which is our liability account, and that totals off. And then you can check and you can make sure that the total that was in um, in your doubtful debts allowance for doubtful debts account actually does match what you were expecting and does match the allowance that you need for the end of the year end that you're doing.
So some final thoughts then for this uh, video. Irrecoverable debts, they are the debts that we definitely won't get paid. OK, so we know that the customer is not going to be able to pay their invoice. To record those, we need the two accounts. We need the sales ledger control account and the irrecoverable debts account. OK, and for this, uh, you're going to debit irrecoverable debts and you're going to credit your sales ledger control account. And don't forget, you also need to credit your um, subsidiary ledger, ledger as well. For your doubtful debts, this means we're unlikely to be paid. And it's normally done on a percentage of your trade receivables. OK. The adjustment account is needed and try to think of this account as a movement account. So like we were doing in the example previously, think of it as a movement account. So at the end of the year, you don't want any more movements. So that account has to come down to zero. But you need that movement account to be able to process the expense that goes into the statement of profit and loss. And then clear down the adjustment account to make sure that that gets moved into the statement of financial position on your allowance for doubtful debts liability account. OK, and then that gives you your total liability um, or your total allowance for your doubtful debts based on your trade receivables. Make sure that balance in your allowance for doubtful debts match what you're expecting. OK, so your calculation prior to starting it is important because you know how much you are expecting um, at the end of it. And most of all, practice makes perfect. Just keep doing practice questions. Think about the information that you're given. Um, and the other thing to also think about is we've done an example on increasing in this video, but have a think about the decreasing. So if an increase was a credit, um, a, a debit into the statement of profit and loss, a decrease will be a credit. OK, so sit there, work through some questions, you know, do it slowly, bit by bit. Try not to rush it um, and it will come with time. So wishing you all the very best of luck for your upcoming exams. And I hope you continue to enjoy your AAT studies.